So you're looking for info about the Leica Q3, you're in the right place. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thomas Love here from beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia and today we're gonna discuss about the imminent Leica Q3. In the past few weeks I was reading and looking for new info from every source available uh, and I was able to filter out a few sources that were most reliable including Mr. Tosin Overgaard who has a direct line with the company and so I watched interviews from the CEO, I read almost everything about it and put all the elements together because I'm very curious about this imminent Leica Q3 launch. So it has been confirmed that Leica Q3 will be launched, we don't know yet when, ideally we think next year. Let's see together point by point what to expect from this brand new camera that will be launched ideally next year. So Leica Q3, what about the body as it is right now? It's a brick, it's a tank. If you missed the video, guys, accidentally I was so clumsy and I dropped my Q2, so find the link over here, but it was only minor damage, just cosmetic damage, so this is a tank it's really resistant and it's also weather resistant so I don't have any clue why they should change the form factor and so if you double check the anticipation from Leica rumors the form factor shall be the same so in this pic you see the back of the Q2 and the Q3 side by side and the comparison is very similar they are very look alike they just changed the disposition of a couple of buttons and from this picture I know all of you are asking about it, it looks like the Q3 will have a tilt LCD in the rear, but it's not a big game changer to me. That would be even less resistant because you have an additional flip out piece that might be damaged in any other way. And so I'm not sure whether Leica would love to implement it or not, I'm fine with any direction the design will take. What about the lens? 28mm Samilux that was on the original Leica Q when it was launched and then it was adopted on the Q2 as well and in my opinion there's no reason to go back to the drawing line and project and develop a new lens for a new body. But let's see if you are right or if I am right but I would go with a 28mm Samilux on the Q3 as well and then if they will eventually launch a similar product with a 35 or a 50 millimeter maybe that would be a sideline a side product a new line of assembly but on the Leica Q they was so successful with this 28 millimeter Samilux that probably they will stay stick to it it is also a unique lens because in the Leica environment Samilux would mean f1.4 while this is a 1.7 that has been developed for our Leica Q and Q2 so I think that we stay stick to it. What about the sensor? A lot of you are asking whether it will be implemented or not the new 60 megapixel sensor from the Leica M11 but the Leica Q line has much more details in common with the Leica SL or SL2 and so this 47 megapixel we have already on our Leica Q2 is more than enough to me it is capable to ensure a good cropping when needed and the resolution is superb and already the raw files are so heavy that it's hard to manage so if they jump up with these megapixel rays to 60 megapixel then maybe you will have to adopt your computer as well and your storage as well and so there will be side money to be invested in this new Q3 so I'm really hoping they will keep the 47 megapixel but since the Q2 was not flawless I'm really hoping for a BSI sensor or a stacked sensor so the speed will be better and the resolution with night photography at high ISO will be better. We also saw using it that recovering highlight from the raw files from the Q2 was challenging and so I'm hoping they will eventually work on a direction that will fix these flaws. High ISO noise and recovering highlights, no matter what resolution. The megapixel race, it's just an excuse that other brands use to sell new, new models, but honestly, this Q2 will never be outdated. So there's really no need to upgrade unless they will give you more. 
and with more I'm not meaning more megapixel but more image quality with low light situations or more possibilities to play around and recover the highlights or whatever it is but sure it is not a better resolution with more megapixel because that's useless up to five minutes ago we were all shooting 24 megapixels and it was good enough to have big printout for advertisement and so I think that 47 is more than enough. What about the battery? The battery in the like environment also has an impact on the design and so they changed already battery from the Leica Q to the Q2 and I'm assuming that right now they will move forward and implement the same battery which is also in common with the SL line because I already purchased two and I don't want to change it again but it might be the case that they're using the same battery and the same cover that we see in the M11 meaning that you will have to open the same compartment in order to access the battery and the memory card and also talking about memory card will an SD card be enough or they will be switching to a faster memory card I have no idea we will see it together I'm quite sure there will be general improvements the EVF will be improved because the resolution is really basic compared to other cameras on the market and also the autofocusing system will be probably improved especially the autofocusing tracking with face recognition which is the standard in many other camera brands as we speak but we as like a user don't value that much because half of us or at least all of us in half of the situations we are shooting with manual focusing so I'm really not in need of an implemented autofocus system or face recognition mechanism, tracking, whatever you want to have. I don't need it. I don't need it, otherwise I would purchase a Sony camera instead. But I would be more than happy to see an improvement they will provide us with. Video capabilities, that's a different chapter to discuss and I'm not sure whether they will implement or not the 6K recording right now in the Leica Q3. There's no need in my humble opinion because already with the 4K recording in 10-bit 42 the files are very very heavy and you have all that you need for eventually post-processing if you want to color grade uh, your recordings you're more than able to do that with a 10-bit recording but 6K recording that would be very 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 good and so it would probably go hand in hand with a higher megapixel resolution but if they want to implement 6K recording then the HDMI port and the mic port will be needed we cannot keep just recording the audio with a different mic we cannot keep just relying on the Leica app to use as a remote because if you don't have an HDMI port then you have no external monitor and there's no way you can manage your recording properly so no ports probably also no 6k recording and then nonetheless the Leica M11 proved that it is possible to have an internal memory so rather than having two SD card slots we might have internal memory and the SD card slot or the memory card slot whatever that memory card would be the memory card might fail you might forget it you might need a double copy as we used to have on professional cameras and so if it was to me and I could pick up the 64 gigs internal memory that they have on the M11 would be definitely nice to have on the Q3. Other minor flaws that we had on the Q2 were of course the lens hood I had to change it because otherwise it was not possible to access the lens and change the filter and so right now I'm also using a different lens cap but apart from that this camera is very very easy to use you have all the commands that you need at hand so if you want to shoot manual like most of us do most of the times we don't have to go in the menu to change any settings you just move a couple of sliders or press buttons and you're able to change the shutter speed the f aperture the iso whatever you need to change also the focusing ring is very good and is comparable to the rangefinder from Leica so I'm very happy with this body with this shape with this dimension and with this lens let's see if they will be able to implement the sensor because the retro illumination will improve the low light conditions and a stuck sensor will be faster recording and I'm really curious to try it 
and see whether it is worth or not the upgrade from my current Q2. With that, I hope you got any value out of this video. If you did, please remember to like it, share it on your social media, subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the new videos to come. And I guess I will see you later. Thank you. Bye.